Our 2013 CES coverage is powered by Ford. Go further. For Hack 5, I'm Darren Kitchen here at CES 2013, and we're talking to Texas Instruments. Hey, Frank, how are you? Good. How are you doing, Darren? Not bad. Listen, um, DLP is the name of the game here. That's what we're talking about. For those not familiar with the technology, what, one, what does it stand for and what does it do for us? Uh, DLP stands for Digital Light Processing. It's an all-digital technology, and we have been in cinemas and in front projection products for a very long time. You've probably seen us on your conference room. You've seen us in cinemas. Uh, so this is our cinema chip, and we've taken that technology and reduced it down to something that small. That's our Pico projection technology, and now you're seeing this go into cell phones, into tablets, into, um, into things like notebooks in the future, and then also into a wide variety of standalone uh, products. So how long has, uh, DL, has, has Texas Instruments been in the DLP business? In the DLP business, uh, we started in uh, around uh, 1996 uh, time frame, uh, but the Pico business is less than five years old. Now, Pico is really blowing up. What is it? What's the driving force behind that? And what was the technical hurdles that it took for us to get to this point? Well, the driving force behind Pico is simply we're in a world with a lot of mobile devices and digital content is, is actually pervasive. And so uh, what Pico does is it allows you to get this big picture from a very small device. And that's really valuable when you've got devices that have limited screen size like this phone um, and you want to get a bigger picture and a better experience. So that's really what's driving this whole fascination with Pico. Biggest picture, smallest box, and now we're seeing some of it go into the very smallest spaces as well. And then we had to take the technology and go from something that was very, you know, that, that worked in an environment where you didn't have any power constraints into things that really involve battery power. And so it's a lot of uh, changing how we did things to structure it so that it would work in those kind of power environments. So it's the classic story of miniaturization. Uh, how long um, has uh, has TI been at the the Pico side of the business, and and you know what did it take to to get the kind of resolution and package size that we're looking at today? Well, the Pico side's been around since since about the uh, end of 2008, early 2009, and uh, and it's really an ongoing process. You know, we just announced, for example, at this show, a new pixel architecture that's going to shrink things down even more really get you 2x the resolution that we have in the same space today. So these right now, these are 1280 by 800, so just you know, somewhere between 720p and 1080p? Right, these are 1280 by 800. This phone is uh, using something uh, like uh, 640 by 360, and then we've got 854 by 480. So depending upon the size of product you've got, how small you want to make it, how big the image you, you want to make, what kind of power constraints you have, then the developers can use those parameters and figure out what kind of chip they want to use, what kind of product they want to make. And so do you envision this being something uh, that will, as the cost drives down, as the technology gets uh, you know, uh, easier and easier to actually manufacture, uh, it being kind of one of those uh, check boxes where right now I don't think you can buy a, a cell phone that doesn't have a camera in it. You know, see what I'm saying? Yeah. Certainly we, lo we love the analogy that talks about how Pico can be analogous to a camera. This is my personal phone, and I use the projection literally on it about once or twice a week. Is it one of those things where you didn't know that you needed it until you had it? Exactly, that's exactly it. And in a world where you've got two operating systems, maybe three operating systems, and hardware that's becoming very, very, very um, you know, common across platforms, Pico is a differentiator to the hardware of these devices. It opens up new experiences for uh, manufacturers and for the users, it's really valuable. And so what's unique about the, uh, the uh, Texas Instrument DLP design? And are you talking about, uh, about different light forms and, and such? Uh, what, what's the, the special sauce in this particular chip? Uh, well, it all, it all starts with, uh, with uh, a, a silicon wafer. And we take the silicon wafer and we build a superstructure on it. Uh, and then that, th those, uh, those structures are simulated and we package it. Um, it's a really involved process, uh, but uh, it, it gets to the very tiny devices that we need to be at to make these products work. 
I think it's going to be interesting to see how the social, once you know these really get down to the cost where every manufacturer is just kind of putting them in as a de facto feature, uh, what that's going to mean to, to social and the social norms of just like you know we had with, oh my gosh, you've got a camera on your phone and you're taking that to the gym, and now we've got Pico projectors on the plane and things of that nature. That's going to be fun. Uh, have you run into any interesting circumstances uh, since using one on your phone? Actually, I have just recently, in fact. Um, I was visiting my parents in Florida, and I live in Dallas, and I saw, I was going by an art gallery, and I saw a painting that I thought was really cool, and so I took a picture of it, and then I went home, and I projected it over my, my couch that I wanted where, the, where I wanted that picture to be. And so I could, I could see the picture without actually purchasing it, and see how it would look in my whole environment. And then I ultimately subsequently purchased the product. So for for things like that where you wouldn't even imagine using a projector, it was all there in my hands, on my phone, the camera, the projector, and it all worked together. So uh, so there's tons of applications like that moving forward. That's really cool. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Nice to meet you, Aaron. Likewise. Well, for continued coverage of all things CES 2013, be sure to head over to revision3.com. Sync is about helping keep you connected while on the go. One of the most useful features of Sync is its ability to control what you listen to. And Sync App Link gives you the power to control apps like Pandora and Slacker Radio with your voice. But sometimes you're going to listen to your own tunes. Well, Sync makes it so easy. It gives you hands-free control of your music files from your digital music player, USB driver, other compatible devices. And even better, if you ask it to play similar music, Sync even uses your own tunes to make a playlist. Thanks again to Ford for powering this Hack 5 CES special.